Wild Hearts throws you into a land filled with giant monsters who wield the power of nature itself. And then it tells you to go fight them. So, in the interest of fairness, here are a few tips and tricks to help you on your way. Wild Hearts sees you fighting some giant beasts known as Kimono who are infused with the power of the elements themselves. It's a fearsome battle and you definitely don't want to head into it against the fearsome Kimono empty-handed, so the first thing you'll need to do is pick a weapon. There are eight different weapon types in Wild Hearts, with each one allowing for a different fighting style, so it's a good idea to play around with them all and figure out which ones work for you. Fortunately, you're able to forge five of them right at the start of the game, and the most basic versions are really cheap to craft, so it's actually easy to give them all a go. Though you will start with two core stones, so pick which two you want to give a go wisely. The katana is a nice versatile melee weapon, midway and capable of both fast attacks and more powerful ones, as well as stamina consuming combos. It's also the weapon you start the game with, so you'll get plenty of practice there. The Nodachi is heavier and a bit slower to wield but packs one hell of a punch, while the Maul is an even more extreme option if you favour a brute force approach. For more elegant fighters, the Bladed Wagaza is light, fast and great for deflecting enemy attacks. Plus, it looks really quite cool. And of course, there's the bow for those who like to keep their distance. Once you reach the game's second chapter, you'll be able to unlock three more options, so you'll find that there's plenty of ways to skin a kimono. While you're free to pick one weapon and stick to it, you might find that different ones work better for different kimonos. And it's also worth considering what your teammates are wielding when you're playing in multiplayer. Of course, your weapons aren't the only things you'll have to wield against those nasty beasts. You've also got a very handy line of ancient technology known as the Karakuri. These mystical gadgets come with all sorts of different uses, and working out how to get the most out of them is the key to coming out on top in battle. Karakuri like the Spring, Glider and Celestial will make you far more mobile, allowing you to effectively outmaneuver some of the more lumbering kimonos. The Bulwark is a great defensive option when you're up against enemies that like to fling projectiles at you, or for protecting you from a stampeding foe, while healing mists can help keep your whole party in good shape. There are lots of different Karakuri to discover, and you can equip up to four at a time, so the key thing again is to experiment, work out which ones suit your playstyle, and look for the most effective combinations when you're playing in multiplayer. Oh, and another ability that's sure to come in handy <coughs> is uh, your patented Hunter's Arm. Clamber onto one of your kimono foes, and the Hunter's Arm will allow you to target their glowing blue weak spots. This is a great way to take on some of your more colossal foes, as they actually have plenty of weak points for you to exploit. As well as being a highly effective fighting strategy, using the Hunter's Arm also makes the enemy more likely to drop a powerful talisman for you when defeated. These magical bits of swag provide all kinds of passive perks, and you can equip up to five at a time. So forming them is a great way to quickly become a much more formidable hunter. Once you've got a good handle on your own equipment, it's time to see what your enemies are packing. The kimono come in all sorts of different forms and each one has its own distinct strengths and weaknesses that you'll need to work out. For the likes of the Rage Tail and the Sap Scourge, you'll find that severing their tails seriously reduces their power, so clipping it off at the first opportunity is always a good idea. Flying foes like Amaterasu become a lot more manageable if you have a Harpoon Karakuri to hand to restrict their movement. Gold Shards, Shiny Projectiles and King Tusk's Raging Charge Attacks are both the sort of thing you'll only want to see while peering out from behind a Bulwark Karakuri. In fact, probably best if you hold down LB and press X as much as you can if you see a King Tusk feet start to go for a run up. Yeah, and since the beasts are all imbued with some sort of natural power, you'll also want to take the elements into account. Gathering the materials to build yourself some ice-resistant armour will make your first encounter with a Deathstalker a whole lot more pleasant. If in doubt, you can always have a flick through your cyclopedia to learn more about the kimono you're currently duking it out with. To get the absolute most out of Wild Hearts, there's also a couple of secondary characters that you're really going to want to familiarise yourself with during the portions of the game where you don't have a giant monster attempting to tear your limbs off. The first is Kugyoku, who runs the Crimson Treasury, where you can buy all sorts of useful materials. The stock changes after each hunt, so be sure to check in regularly and don't forget to sell off anything you don't need to keep yourself well funded. Basically, anything in your inventory marked material to be sold for money is a pretty good place to start. Then there's Nobumitsu over at the wharf in Minato. As a member of the Guild of the Fishermen, he'll provide you with various quests as well as ample rewards for completing them. The best part is that they're all things you'll find yourself doing anyway over the course of the game, so stay in touch with Nobumitsu to make sure you get paid for your work. 
When you are exploring Wild Hearts various maps, the kimono aren't the only thing you'll want to keep an eye out for. Although, definitely keep an eye out for them too. Dragon pits are vital locations that allow you to build special karakuri, which give you a real edge in battle. So be sure to activate any that you come across. By spending more resources to upgrade them, you'll be able to place even more dragon karakuri in each region, effectively giving you the home field advantage. And finally, those sphere-shaped Tsukomo are well worth hunting down, since these handy critters increase the amount of celestial threads you can carry, which of course allows you to craft more karakuri. If you're playing solo, they'll also give your AI companion a bit of a power boost, so they're definitely worth taking the time to track down. Yeah, you might still be squaring up to monsters the size of fire trucks, but following these Wild Hearts tips should at least give you a fighting chance. And don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell to catch some more Xboxy tricks of the trade. Bye!